This is a moment grace walks in. It's not over. It's not over. This is a moment grace walks in. With arms wide open, arms wide open. To tell you this is not the end. When doubt is strong and your will is weak, to even believe again. That's when grace, that's when grace. There's got to be more than going back and forth From doing right to doing wrong Cause we were taught that's who we are well, Come on, get in line right behind me You along with everybody Thinking there's worth in what you do Then like a hero who takes the stage When we on the edge of our seat Saying it's too late let me introduce you to amazing grace. No matter the bumps, no matter the bruises, no matter the scars, still the truth is a cross has made, the cross has made.
It's the light that pierces through you to the darkest hidden place. It knows your deepest secrets, but it never looks away. It's the gentle hand that pulls you from the judgment of the crowd. When you stand before them guilty and you got no way out, some may call. Good morning and welcome to Bethel this morning. We'd like to welcome you. We, it is Palm Sunday today, so um, we're gonna have Kirstie's going to read on that. This morning we read from John chapter 12, verses 12 to 15. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. We're just going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing each one of us here today, Lord. We pray your blessing upon this service. We thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice that you've made coming to earth, Lord, and sacrificing yourself for us, Lord. We pray that as we go throughout this season, Lord, that we remember the, the, uh, the sacrifice that you did for us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like you to stand with us as we sing. We pray that you just be entering to God's presence.
place to cry for me. Sing in the middle of the storm. never fails will not fail me now he won't fail me now no way he did the same god who never flakes is working all things out you work in over you in your hurting in your sorrow I will ask my God to move I speak the name cause it's all that I can do in 
desperation, I'll seek heaven, and I pray this for you, pray for your healing, that circumstances would change, I pray that the fear inside would flee, in Jesus' name, I pray that I'm
into this place, Father, in even a greater way. Father, for you are in control of all things. And Father, we give you the praise and you deserve the honor and the glory. We praise your name. We praise your name, Jesus. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. May our songs be sweet incense unto you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team, for ushering us into the presence of God. Hosanna. Hosanna. Today is the day. Palm Sunday, when we greet the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And today in Children's Church, if you're not coming to Children's Church, you guys are going to miss out. Not that the pastor doesn't have a message for you, but we have some special stuff going on in Kids' Church today, celebrating Palm Sunday. We have a few announcements. Um, first of all, we have the Good Friday service on March the 29th. Easter Sunday, we start with a breakfast. The board is cooking. They will have breakfast from 9 o'clock till 10.30, and we'd like to close it down about then so that our people could um, clean up and also enjoy the service. We will also be having communion on Sunday as um, we have um, so much going on in the next few days. So next Sunday we will have communion. I've already talked to Dan, so we're good at that. Pastor Boniface is going to talk to you a little bit more about our uh, marriage with conflict. Uh, with, at con, winning at conflict, not marriage with conflict. Um, we, we want to avoid that. But next week we'll have a little clip for you showing you sort of what, what's happening. But we want everyone to attend, whether you're dating, whether you're married, whether you're considered, ma considering getting married, we want you to come. Because Ruth and Simon Clarence are very, very good at what they do. They're, they're both counselors, and uh, we don't want you to miss it. But Pastor Boniface will give you some uh, great news on that. We have our e Easter ecumenical service also on April the 7th in the evening after the winning at conflict. And the 14th, we have a plan to protect. We People were saying, well, if we took it last year, do you have to take it this year? Yes, you have to take it this year. So, Luke Henkelman from Camp Nackman is coming. He, it's not like an all day long thing. He does it in a way that is um, broken down. If you have never taken Plan to Protect, I would like you to talk to me because then I will do a follow up. There's some things that we will follow up on. So um, we have that coming up also. For anyone wanting to be part of that Easter choir, Rhonda would like to meet with you right after the service today for a quick little practice, so we have that going on. A food drive for the food bank. Our food bank is very low. I would ask that you bring it in by Wednesday because I'm going to take it to the FCSS this week, um, and we will do that. The Raju family, Palais and, and Vander Weckens, <laughs> They all want to thank our church for what happened here yesterday. We had um, the largest lunch I think we've ever had. We had 550 here for lunch yesterday, and our foyer was filled with tables. And for all of you who helped in any way, I know many brought food, many brought um, themselves. They came to help set up. They came, that was our youth. Thank you to our youth for setting up the tables in the gym. And for those who quick set up tables in our foyers. Thank you for doing that. Um, I got to tell you that it was a blessing to see the churches work together as we did yesterday. And I believe that Sarah and Tim would have been very pleased and God received the glory for what, what took place in here yesterday. So thank you for all that helped. Um, also, we want to thank um, those who um, have have been helping in any volunteer in any way um, and bringing all your
pop tops and your milk jug lids and your newspapers. We have enough of those now. If you've been saving them, I would like you to bring them in to me, but you can stop saving them now because I think we have enough. The only thing I'm looking for is pool noodles. I want pool noodles. Old, new, whatever. So if you would like, if you feel inspired to donate a pool noodle, I will take it. So we have that for our VBS. Um, we would like to also um, take up the offering. We'll do that now. And then I have some prayer requests here today. For those that are watching online, thank you for joining us. And anyone that's new here today, I'd like you to meet with our volunteer hostesses. And uh, they have a little gift for you. So thank you for joining us today. Lord, we thank you for this offering. Father, that it be used to further your kingdom. Father, we thank you for each and every giver. And we just ask that you bless them double fold. In your name we pray. Amen. We uh, got a phone call today to pray for Pete. He is struggling with his breathing. We ask that you pray for him. We also would like to pray for Lester. And uh, Kevin um, has, has some foot issues, and we'd like to pray. We prayed with him in the office, but we would like you to continue praying for these three throughout the week. Um, we give God all the glory. Um, as we were singing that song, I was thinking about how how God is the one who comes to heal us. He's the one reason that we are healed. So I'm just going to pray, and I'd like you guys to keep these people in prayer for the week. Father God, we thank you for Pete and Lester and Kevin. And we thank you that they call out to you for their healing. And as we come upon this Easter week, Father, we, th we think of by your stripes we are healed. And Father, by the stripes of Jesus and the blood that he shed, that we can have healing in our body. And our healing belongs to Jesus. And Father, we just ask that you touch these bodies of these three men and that you just give them a special blessing this week. Father, that you restore them to health. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you. Amen. I now call up the kids, and we are going to go and, and go to Children's Church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh -huh. Thank you. Good to see you here this morning. Again, how many of you are excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Oh. Excellent. Looks like this side is not excited. How many are excited to be here? <laughs> All right, so thank you so much, and um, I'm excited to, to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Now, just before I start uh, speaking, uh, uh, Teresa talked a little bit about the winning, can you take that slide back there, winning at, uh, at what? Conflict? So, uh, that is a seminar which we planned since last year. And we did plan for that because, you know, those are very important seminars in the church today. One of the, one of the things which the enemy is really fighting, fighting in our society today, and even in the church, is what we call relationships. You will agree with me. The enemy is fighting that. Any sort of relationship, you know, a friendship, if you're dating, if you're married, you know, those are the things which the enemy is fighting. And as a church, we need to know or to understand the schemes of the enemy. 
And uh, be able to talk about that, teach that, and, uh, you know, try to see how we can, you know, how we can go ahead of the enemy, you know. And we came up with, uh, with this one, and uh, some of you who have attended this before, you will agree with me that uh, it's very helpful. Because in any relationship, you need conflict resolution skills. Unless you are angels, you may not be facing conflict in your relationships. But if you are a human being like myself, for sure you will be able to face some sort of conflict. But we manage the conflict and then we move on because we understand the schemes of the enemy. Apologize appropriately. And again, that's one of the areas which is really hard. You know, one time, like, a, you know, I think it was maybe one of my, you know, my children years back, just little, but then I'm just, you have to say sorry. Just saying sorry was really hard. And I'm like, it's just little. She should have just said sorry immediately because she doesn't even know what sorry means. Would you please say sorry? Say sorry. Then, sorry. <laughs> Why? Because the enemy knows when you say sorry, everything is over. Right? So sometimes you're so like, ah, hi, 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 and you're really upset, and someone's like, oh, I'm so sorry. And if you're like, okay. Okay, what do I do then? Someone says sorry, and sorry is like shh, stopping everything. So those are just few things, you know, managing anger and so on and so forth, because we are, we are human beings. You know, there, there's that human nature which we need to just to learn how we can control that. So that's why we came up with that seminar, and you know, the price there was like 35 so that we can, you know, just be able to cover some of the costs here and there. But you know what? Because of how important this seminar is, so we talked in our board, we said we will be covering everything so that all of you and all of us, we can attend that seminar. So if you are in a relationship, if you're dating, if you're uh, you know, you like husband and wife or anything like that, so we encourage you to attend. Okay? And if you, you know, so if you have maybe some, some people you know from other churches, we shared this also through the ministerial. So you have some friends from Alliance Church, Church of God, you know, CRC and so forth. Invite them to come because we just want to make sure that, you know, we learn and we go ahead of the enemy so that we understand the schemes of the enemy. So, no cost, we just want you to come. But again, in order for us to be able to plan well, we just need you to register. So if you can do that, then that's gonna be really good. So we'll have a sign-up sheet somewhere in the back, uh, maybe from next Sunday, I don't think we have it today, but uh, we can sign, and then just so we know that you're coming, okay? Okay? Is that well understood? Yep. Or should I speak in Swahili? <laughs> <laughs> just to emphasize? Good. Perfect. So I think that's well understood. Now, let's move to the Word of God this morning. And uh, later on after service, after I speak... Aaron will have something to say. He said, maybe it's a message from God. I don't know. He said he has a message. So I'll let him come after I'm done. But let's move now to hear what God has for us this morning. And uh, so this is what we call Palm Sunday. And this marks like the beginning of the week, which we celebrate the victorious death 
and eventually resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this is a very important, a very important, you know, I shouldn't say holiday, but a very important uh, calendar or event in our life as Christians. Now, uh, this week we had um, like a prayer, you know, ministers, pastors from around the district. And the title or uh, the theme was From Death to Life. And I was privileged to be, you know, to speak or to give a devotional. And I thought, this is all I spoke. And uh, when I was praying about this morning, I felt that I need to share this one with you as well. So I'm going to be speaking about from death to life. And that's the implication or that's the application of the death and the resurrection of our Savior, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'll be reading from the book of John, chapter number 11, verse number 17 to 26. This is how it reads from New King James Version. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb for four days. For four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will raise or will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? So this was the conversation between Jesus and Martha. And this happens after their brother, Martha and Mary, their brother Lazarus, died. And he was a very good friend of Jesus. And they had sent the news to Jesus that your friend, the one you love, he is very sick, very ill. And if you could come, because they knew that Jesus can do or can perform a miracle. But then Jesus gets the news, and he's still doing some other things there, and eventually Lazarus dies. But he's not in rush going to Bethany. 
He's still there the first day, the second day, the third day, to the fourth day. Now he goes there, and in a normal circumstance, he is late. Now, I want to give you a context here. In our culture, we tend to see things in a different way. Then I can just pose this question to you, what do you see or what do I see? There are some of the things you see, you know, under normal circumstances, this is what I see. And that's exactly what Martha and, his, and her sister Mary, they were seeing that now our brother is already dead. They see point of no return. There is no way now, Jesus, number one, Jesus, you are too late. You were supposed to be here four days ago. But now you're, you're coming and it's too late, Jesus. That's what they see. What do I see? So they see that Jesus is late. Four days. And if you read about the four days in their tradition, it was like after that they will never expect any miracle for someone who is dead. So that's what they see. Jesus, you're late. You should have been here four days ago, but you are late. And I wonder if that's what we see sometimes in our lives. There are some of the things you, you are like, I wanted that to happen now, but then it is not happening. And you are like, Jesus, you are late. This is too late, Jesus. I wanted to get this, but I can't because it's too late. That's what we see. That's what I see. You're going through some issues where like, Jesus, I wanted you to heal me yesterday. So that I could do some, some of other things. But now, up until now, you haven't done anything, Jesus. It is too late. What do I see? What do I see? And then, I mean, Martha keeps saying, Jesus, if you had been here, because I wanted to see your physical being, like you being there physically, but you were, you have, you, you, you have been away, you know. So to Martha, the miracles, miracles depends on the physical appearance or physical being of Jesus. What do I see? If you had been here, Jesus, my brother would not have died. But because you have not been here, so my brother is gone now. So this is what she sees, actual things that Jesus, you, you, I wish you had been here. Yes, I know you are here now, but it's too late. There's nothing you can do. What do I see in my life? What do you see? Some of the situations which maybe you have been going through and you're like, now I think it's all over. There's no way, there's no point of return. And this is exactly when, if you remember, when Moses was leading the Israelites to the promised land, they get into the Red Sea. And they, there's nothing, what they see in front of them is the Red Sea. Behind the enemies. 
So sometimes you get into that situation where you, what you can see is just death. And that's why David says in Psalm number 23, verse number 4, even if I go through the valley of the shadow of death, sometimes you go through the valley of the shadow of death. And I, I was trying to think about what does that mean? It means you are in a valley where the shadow of that de- valley is everything death. You look on your side, death. Left side, death. Up, death. Down, death. Moving forward, death. Going back, death. So you are kind of surrounded by death. What do I see? But then Jesus is bringing another perspective. And here comes a question. What does Jesus see? When I see the storms, does Jesus see the storm? When I see death, does Jesus see the same way you see? So if you take this conversation here, the context of this conversation looks like what Mary, I mean Martha, was trying to see was something different from what Jesus was seeing. The same scenario, the same situation, but Jesus sees it different and Martha sees it different. So Jesus is telling Martha, because Martha is like, okay, Jesus, I know that if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Then Jesus said to him, listen, your brother will raise again. So Jesus sees that resurrection coming up. And Martha said that, yes, Jesus, I know he will raise again, but not now, in the very last day. We see two different things. I know he will raise again, but not now, but in the very last day. I know, Jesus, what you're talking about, I know that. I know. But Jesus is saying, if you read another translation, I was trying to go through the the message Bible. It says, you don't have to wait for the end. I am right now, resurrection and life. So Martha's perspective is like, okay, now that at the very last day, my brother will come back again, and I'll get to see my brother. Of course, that's what we believe even today. When we lose our loved ones, we know that at the very last day, we'll see them. You know, I lost my dad in 2001, you know, and that was one of the moments in my life. I know that I'll see him in the very last day. And that's exactly the perspective which Martha had, which was right. But what does Jesus see? So Jesus is saying that, okay, perfect. Martha, I know, Martha says, I know he will raise up again in the resurrection day at the very last day. But Jesus said to her, to her, I am, I am, I am the resurrection and life. And Jesus is using the term I am. This is the fifth of the seventh times this word is being used in the book of John. And if you are a good Bible reader, you know that those days when Moses was about to lead the Israelite to the promised land, when he wanted an assurance from God that God, if they ask me, who is this God? You remember that. What should I tell them? And God says, God tells them, I am who I am. And this is my name forever. 
And that I should be remembered the generations to generations. Now, when, 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 when the word I am is being used in the Bible, this means that he's talking about the all-time nature of God or attribute of God. How he was yesterday, he's the same today, and he will be the same tomorrow and forevermore. So Jesus is telling man, I mean Martha, that okay, I am now, right now, I am the resurrection and life. I can give life to anything which is dying now because I am now. You don't have to wait for the very last day, but now as I speak, I am that resurrection in life. Hallelujah. Right now, what does Jesus see? When you see that Jesus is late for four days, Jesus says, time doesn't matter to me. I can do it now because I am the resurrection and life. When you think that maybe he's not there physically, and then you're like, okay, we can't physically see Jesus, but he's like, no, that doesn't matter to me. I can still do that because I am right now the resurrection and life. When you think that maybe, you know, you know, you know those old days, Sarah in the Bible is like, I'm too old to have a child. But God said, there is nothing impossible with me. I can still do it. It doesn't matter what. What does Jesus see? Yes, you, be, you may be seeing a different situation in you, but he's saying, no, I am right now. Right now. That resurrection in life, right now, I am the resurrection in life. Not that I will be some days, but now, now I can do that. And then he's asking her, do you believe this? Because Jesus can be anything depending on what you believe. In my life, I've been believing. Like, I believe God beyond doubt. I have seen him doing a lot in my life. So there isn't even a single day I would doubt him. I just need to prove him. If he tells me, go here, and I know he's the one who told me, trust me, I can go there regardless what. So he's saying, I'm right now the resurrection in life, and that's who I am. But then do you believe? Because sometimes in the midst of death, sorrow, weeping, but he's like, I am the resurrection in life. I can turn the dying situation into life. And I want to speak to you now. doesn't matter what things have been dying in your life. If you believe, he can change those things and give life again because he is right now the resurrection and life. It doesn't matter if there are things in this church which we thought that maybe they are dying. No. I said in the beginning of the year, and I'll keep repeating again, God is going to use this church in a very different way. I expected a bigger man there. I expected a man there. I expected a man there. Uh -huh. But do you believe it? 
That's the question. Do you believe it? Why? Because faith makes all the difference. Faith makes all the difference. Last year, I think I spoke about Jairus' daughter. You know, you remember that, the sermon. And when Jairus went to Jesus, say, my daughter is dying. Twelve years old daughter, she's dying. And Jesus said, because you have believed, I'm going to do a miracle. And then on the way to Jairus' house, here comes another woman who has been struggling with, uh, you know, bleeding for 12 years. The other girl is 12 years old, and this woman has been bleeding for 12 years old. I mean, for 12 years. And then Jesus now is changing, you know, there was a disruption there. And then instead of going to Jairus' house, Jairus' house, he is now dealing with this woman who also believed and says, if I only touch the garment. And she goes, touch the garment of Jesus. Jesus said that someone, someone has touched me. And everybody's like, how can, you, how can you know someone has touched you in this big crowd? That was not a normal touch. That was a supernatural touch. And that lady made a statement of faith. That woman said, if I only touch, that's what we call a statement of faith. And because of that belief, the Bible says she was healed right away. And now they come from Jairus' house. They're like, you know what? Don't even bug the teacher because your daughter is dead. And, you know, and Jesus turned to Jairus. He's like, just believe. Why? Because faith makes all the difference. If you believe God can do anything which you can, he can turn the situation you are going through, even if you are going through a, some, you know, it's a dying situation. You are like, I am now facing death, but he can turn that into life again just because you believe. So he's asking the question, do you believe? Friends, let us confess, yes, Lord, I believe. In the situation you're going through, just say, yes, Lord, I believe. Even if it's a, like, a, like a horrible situation, you think maybe this is too much now, you know, it's too late, you know. And sometimes it's too late. As I said, four days was too late. Maybe you're facing a problem which is like now it's too late at a level where there's no point of return. But the question comes, do you believe this? And if you believe that, he can turn the situation which you are facing death and turn it into life again. But do you believe it? Let's believe. That regardless of what we are facing, but in this Easter season, we have Jesus who overcame death. And he came up again, and he is the victorious one. And if we believe in him, doesn't matter what situation we are facing, but he will bring that situation into life again. Because he is the resurrection and life. And let's believe that this church, this is my last Sunday as I preach here. I'm going to be here next week, but I'm not going to be speaking. And I said this over and over again. And last week you had bond meeting, I said the same thing. God is going to do amazing things through this church. But we need to keep believing in him. 
Let's not allow the devil, the enemy to come and uh, do anything in this house again. Enough is enough. I'm saying enough is enough. We turn to the enemy, we're like, you, enough is enough. There is no room here. This is God's house and it's going to flourish in Jesus' name. And I'll be really happy when I'm not here, but I hear that they're doing amazing. You know, Pastor Ben is doing an excellent job. That's going to fill my heart with joy. But do you believe this? Do you believe this? This song, which uh, I said a little bit about this last week, I think we sang last week. I love the words of the song. In Christ alone, my hope is found. In Christ alone, the hope of this church is found. In Christ alone, the hope of my life and my family is found. He is my light, my strength, and my song. He is my light, my strength, and my song. Let Jesus be the light of this church. I was so much blessed yesterday. I'm sitting at the Alliance Church and Pastor Trevor said, thank you so much, Bethel Pentecostal Church. And he called me the other day before. He said, thank you so much. Friends, this is how the church has to be. Building the kingdom of God. So when I saw yesterday here the crowd from different churches, they are happy, enjoying. And in our church, I was like, this is what we want to see. They asked me, can we use the sanctuary for, for meals? I said, no, we can't go to the sanctuary, but let's use any other place we can. Even if we want to use the washrooms, just go use them. <laughs> we can't bring the meals here, the food to the sanctuary. But friends, this is how the church has to be. And this is just the beginning of what God is going. The light, the light, the light is going to be seen now. Bethel, shining as a light in this community. But do we believe this? So he's my light and he's my strength. He's my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground. In the last song, there's no guilt in life, no fear in death. Hallelujah. No guilt in life, no fear in death. Because this is the power of Christ in me. Huh. That reminds me of Tata here in Ogona. I call him Tata. Yesterday, driving from Alliance Church to come here, he says, he's kind of like saying the same words, my solid foundations, Jesus Christ. Going through a lot in a very short period of time, but saying that no guilt in life, no fear in death, and this is the power of Christ in me. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus 
commands my destiny. He commands the destiny of this church. And I'm telling you the truth. If he was not, if, or if he would have not done that, then this church was not supposed to be here today. You know that. Because the enemy had planned that maybe it's going to be closed down. Like there isn't anything like that in Jesus' name. We will strive until he comes. But do you believe this? Do you believe this? So Jesus commands my destiny. That's why I'm saying sometimes you see things differently, but how he sees things is different from how you see them. He says in the, in the book of Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you. The plans to give you future because I command your destiny. And Jesus commands my destiny and the destiny of this church. But do you believe this? Do you believe this? No power of hell, no scheme of man. No power of hell, no scheme of man. Because sometimes other things will come from the enemy, but other schemes will come from the enemy through somebody. But there's no scheme of hell, or power of hell, or scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. Because I am his and he is mine. We are kind of joined like this. I am his and he is mine. And friends, this is God's church. No power of hell, no schemes of man, shall be able to pluck this church away from God's hand. And Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall never prevail against the church. But do you believe this? Do you believe this? And he says, till he returns... Or call me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. Hallelujah. Just love that. Here in the power of Christ I stand. If you look down and you're like here in the power of Christ I stand. That gives you confidence, right? Here in the power of Christ I stand. Let's all stand up. And if I can have the worship team back here. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? That he can turn the situation where you're like, now I am dying. Or some of the things are dead in my life. And he can bring them back to life again. But do you believe this? Do you believe this? That he can use this church in this community in a very special way. But do you believe this? Yesterday I visited someone in the hospital there. And then when I was praying for him, you know, the other patient in the side bed. He's like, can you also pray for me? And I prayed for him. I, I'm not even sure if he's a Christian or he goes to any church. I don't really know. But I was praying for Lester on the other side and then he heard that. He's like, oh, oh. so he believed. He's like, oh, that was a good prayer. And I, and I was like, can I pray for you too? He said, yes, you can pray for me. And I prayed for him. 
God is going to use this church to do an amazing work in this community. No more shame in Jesus' name. Enough is enough. But do you believe this? Do you believe this? Let's sing one song and then we'll pray. Do you believe this? That's a question. Do you believe this? 
I don't know, but maybe you're going through some situations which you're like, you kind of see that as death in a way. But Jesus can turn that into life because he is the resurrection and life right now. But do you believe this? Do you believe this? Let's turn this now into a house of prayer. You can have your moment, or if you feel like you want to pray for someone, or if you feel like you want to come here, do you believe this? Do you believe this? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. While you're standing like that, let me just read these uh, few verses to you. And as I say, this is my last Sunday with you, in a way. I'm still going to be here next week. But we'll have another speaker, and we'll do the special installation service for Pastor Ben. I've been with you here for more than a year. And we have gone through a lot of things together. All that is to make sure that we build God's kingdom. God's church. This is so precious before God. Because he purchased this church. The cost of which no one here will be able to bear that. And uh, by God's grace, Happy and I did what we could for this body. And if there's anything we did, it was just because we were just servants. All the glory and honor go back to God. Because he is the God of his church. Apostle Paul, when he was talking to the church in Philippi, in chapter number two, he said these words, and I want to say these words to you. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, If any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete. And I want to stand in that position of Apostle Paul and say, I've been with you here for more than a year, Now make my joy complete. By being like-minded. Having the same love. 
And I said before, the meeting, I mean, the beginning of this year, God is going to bring a lot of people, different types of people. Love them. Embrace them. If they have weakness, just deal with the weakness, but love them. Don't hate them because of their weaknesses. Because we all have our weaknesses. I do have them. But still God loves me. Having the same love. Being one in spirit and one mind. Because this is God's church. Do nothing out of self-ambition. Or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. Not looking to your own interests. We have our own interests here. Everybody has it. I, if, if I had to take my own interests, I had a lot of my own interests. But Apostle Paul said that not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of others. In your relationships with one another, relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made a, in a human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. The death on a cross was the, 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 the most terrible death of the ancient days. They torture you, you die slowly, and they, they hang you naked, and they're like, okay, let's see now. Everybody will see your shame and everything. He humbled himself, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord for the glory of God the Father. When we do everything I said here, God is going to lift up this church. And everybody was going to say, those are the blessed people. These are my words to you. God bless you. You may be seated. Aaron. worship team. Uh, I'm going to actually invite Pastor Boniface and Happy back up here, as well as the other board members and the board members from last year as well to join us. Um, as Pastor Boniface mentioned, this is his last Sunday uh, preaching with us, and so we wanted to recognize them and thank them for all that they've done over this last year and a bit uh, for the family of Christ here at Bethel. So we want to present you guys with a gift and some flowers and we want to pray over you um yeah we are truly blessed by you guys this is something if, if you don't know pastor boniface doesn't live in barhead he would be traveling back and forth spending time away from his family to be here with us and so we appreciate it so much all that you've done that you've set us up on this path where we found a pastor that we can 
uh, move forward and that, uh, yeah, we just appreciate so much this time and effort that you spent here with us. And uh, we want to just pray with you. I'm going to ask Shannon if you'd pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for all that you've done for your church, Father God, and for the future that you have for us. We thank you for sending Pastor Boniface and Happy to us for this time. And we just thank you for the sacrifice that they had to make to be obedient to your calling, Father God. We just pray, Father God, that you would be with them and continue to bless them in their future endeavors. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Two more things that we'd like uh, to do. So on April the 21st, that's a Sunday evening at 5.30 p.m., we're going to be having a farewell potluck uh, for Pastor Boniface and Happy. So we'd invite you all to come. There'll be more information in the next uh, few Sundays about that. But mark in your calendars, April 21st. And then also um, from now until April 21st, we are going to be taking a love offering for Pastor Boniface. Um, and so if you feel called to bless him and his family, uh, you can just mark on your envelopes moving forward these next few weeks for a love offering for them. Thank you. Thank you all for coming today, and we pray that you have a blessed Sunday. Thank you.
speed.